semiconductors lies in between that of conductors and insulators. So that are semiconductors. And if you see um, the mainly used semiconductors are silicon, germanium, etc. And there are two types of semiconductors basically. The semiconductors can be classified as intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductors means the semiconductor in its most pure form is called the intrinsic semiconductors. Whereas if we add some impurities into the semiconductors in order to change the conductivity, such semiconductors are called extrinsic semiconductor and the process of adding of this impurity is called doping. So we will be seeing that in later in this video. So first let's see what is the structure of a intrinsic semiconductor. So this is the physical structure of an intrinsic silicon. So if you see there are various silicon atoms here and in the outer shell of a silicon atom there are four electrons present and in order to maintain stability it consists of it should have eight electrons and what this silicon atom will do is whenever other four silicon atoms are coming near to it it will share this four outer electrons with the other silicon atoms and receive the four electrons from the other four atoms so that is done here so if you see this there is electron sharing happening so this electron is from this silicon and this electron is from this silicon so this is a electron sharing between two this two of the silicon atoms so this is electron sharing pair this is another electron sharing pair this is another and this is another so one of this electron is coming from one silicon atom the other electron is coming from the other silicon atom and this type of Electron sharing bonds are called covalent bonds. Covalent bonds. So these type of questions can be uh, come in uh, exams, aptitude exams or any other exams. So you should be aware of the name of these bonds. And also you should be aware that there, there are four outer electrons present in the outer shell of a silicon atom. So this is the physical structure of a intrinsic silicon and if you see here you cannot see any other elements and hence it is called an intrinsic silicon or a pure silicon and in the intrinsic silicon at temperature is equal to 0 Kelvin it is considered as insulator. Why because if you see there is no other uh, there is no free electrons present in the uh, structure right in the crystal structure there is no free electrons present and due to the absence of this free electrons there is no current flowing through the semiconductor or there is no conductivity and we assume that this silicon crystal at temperature is equal to 0 Kelvin is behaving like an insulator and if you see the energy band diagram here all the electrons are present in the valence band there is no electrons present in the conduction band so in order to have conduction or conductivity the electrons should be present in which band conduction band but due, uh, but due to the absence of temperature or at zero kelvin there is no free electrons and there is no electrons in the conduction band and the silicon will behave like an insulator so when the temperature is increased what happens is that this electrons has a tendency to break this bonds and become free so what happened is that this electron will break the bond and they will be free and they will act like a free electron and similarly other electrons also has a tendency to break the bond that is a covalent bond and they will be free electrons and what happens when this electrons are breaking the bond means they will create a free space or a vacancy in the bonding or in the bond and this vacancy is called holes holes are actually just a vacancy of electrons so we know that electrons is having a negative charge right so when a negative charge is lost from a particular point or a portion we assume that it is having a positive charge that is the absence of a negative charge we consider it as a positive charge and hence we say that holes are having positive charge and electrons is having negative charge but actually the holes are absence of electrons so this vacancy is created here so this holes are present due to the absence of the electrons so there is free electrons here and there are holes here right so the electrons from the adjacent bond also have this tendency to jump to this hole that is for this particular electron this can jump to this hole and just just fill that vacancy 
So this positive charge is there. There is an electron in the other bond. So this positive charge will try to attract the electrons and this the other electrons also have a tendency to break the bond and jump to that hole and to fill that vacancy. So this thing can also happen here. So when this electron is uh, moved from this portion, what will happen here? There will again create another hole, right? So if you see from the external viewpoint, we will uh, see that or we will think that the holes are moving. So from this portion, the hole has jumped to this portion and also this hole will be filled by other electron and it can jump to some other portion. So we can think that this hole is actually moving but actually what is happening, the electrons are filling that vacant space. So this is actually happening in the crystal structure. So there are free electrons here, there is holes here, right? So there is uh, electrons and holes here and if you connect some external battery, or potential what will happen is that the this holes have a tendency to move towards the negative side of the battery because hole is assumed to be having or hole is having what charge positive charge and this free electrons will move towards which terminal of the battery positive terminal of the battery and hence there is a conduction happening so this is happening in when when the temperature is increased so when the temperature is increased free carriers are generated inside the semiconductors and the conductivity is increased right or the resistance is assumed to be reduced so we say that semiconductors is having negative temperature coefficient of resistance that is when the temperature is increased the resistance will reduce so that is the one important property of semiconductors. Also when the temperature is increased, what will happen? The electrons will move from which band to which band? The uh, valence band to the conduction band. These free electrons will be present in which band? That is the conduction band. And hence, there are free electrons in the conduction band and hence the conductivity is increased, right? So the conductivity is increased when the temperature is increased. That is the case with the semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductor is the most pure form. And we add, and if we add some impurities into that pure structure, we will get extrinsic semiconductors. Now, what type of impurities are we going to add? We will be discussing. So, the dopants or the impurities in general are of two categories. Donor impurities will create n type of extrinsic semiconductor, and the acceptor impurities will create p type semiconductor. We will see that later, but just you have to keep this thing in mind. Then the donor impurities are group 5 elements in the, in the uh, periodic table. The group 5 elements are nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth. And why they are called group 5 elements? Because they have 5 electrons present in the outer shell. And also the acceptor impurities are group 3 elements present in the periodic table. And they are boron, aluminium, gallium, indium and thallium. And they are, why they are called group 3 means because they are having only 3 electrons in their outer shell. Right. So first let's talk, talk about the donor impurity. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a phosphorus which is a donor impurity and I'm going to place it here. That is I'm going to perform doping. Right. So doping means adding of these impurities into the pure silicon structure. So this was a pure silicon structure and I have added the an impurity which is the N type of impurity or uh, I'm sorry uh, the donor type of impurity and I have placed it here. So this phosphorus is having how many electrons in the outer shell? It is having five electrons in the outer shell, right? So the phosphorus will also donate its four electrons from its outer shell electrons with the nearby silicon atom and also there is one or more electron present in the in the outer shell of the phosphorus right so that will act like a that will act like a free electron so there is a free electron created in the structure silicon structure right so if i'm going to replace more and more silicon atoms with the phosphorus atoms means what will happen phosphorus will donate more and more free electrons to the structure and hence large number of free electrons will be generated in the silicon structure. So if you perform doping of more and more phosphorus means more and more free electrons is generated. The electrons is having negative charge for that negative type of semiconductor is generated or the N type semiconductor is generated and hence the N type extrinsic silicon crystal is created. 
Okay, so this is a case if you dope with nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony or bismuth because all are donor impurities or n-type impurities or group 5 impurities. So that is the, that is the structure of a n-type semiconductor which will be having large number of free electrons. These free electrons are donated by the donor impurity. So we have discussed about the case of n-type semiconductor or n-type intrinsic semiconductor. They are generated by doping the silica that is the intrinsic silicon with the donor impurity or the group 5 elements. Now what is the case with acceptor impurities? Acceptor impurities are elements of group 3 in the periodic table. They have only 3 elements in the outer shell. So 3 elements means there is a scarcity of 1 electron in the outer shell in order to complete the covalent bond if they are being uh, inter introduced into the silicon crystal structure. So there will be created a scarcity of electron, right? So let's see how is it happening. So what I'm going to do is this is my um, intrinsic silicon crystal which is having only silicon. Now I'm going to replace this silicon with a boron here. So this boron when the uh, when it is introduced it is having one, two, three electrons in the outer shell. So, in order to complete the rest of one bone, it requires how many electrons? One more electron. So, what it will do? It will, it will pull this electron from this bone. That is, there is a covalent bond between the adjacent other silicon atoms, right? So, from that covalent bond, it will try to pull a electron and it will try to make a bond with the nearby silicon. Now, all this, all these electrons are obtained and this boron has completed its outer shell by obtaining 8 electrons. But what has happened here, here a vacancy is created, right? Because it has pulled an electron from the adjacent silicon covalent bond. So there is a vacancy of an electron or a hole is generated. So always you have to think that the vacancy of an electron is a hole. So like that whenever you are introducing more and more borons means so again here if you are introducing again another another electron has to be pulled in order to complete the covalent bond with the boron. So there will be a lot of holes generated in the structure or the crystal structure and hence the the structure will be having more and more holes and more and more positive charge and hence the name P-type semiconductor or P-type extrinsic semiconductor. So I hope this concept is really clear to everybody. So hence the N-type and the P-type semiconductor is generated. So we have discussed about extrinsic semiconductors, intrinsic semiconductors, N-type, P-type semiconductor and doping. So I really hope the concept is very much clear to everybody. So I really hope this 5 minute video was useful. And also let's see what are the important questions. So we have talked about the intrinsic crystal structure. So it is having a what type of uh, temperature coefficient of resistance? It is having a negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Because as the temperature increases what will happen? The resistance will decrease. And also the questions can come from what is a donor impurity? What is an acceptor impurity? And which group elements are donor impurities? And which group elements are acceptor impurities? And what is an n-type semiconductor? What is the what is a p-type semiconductor? What is the majority charge carriers in an n-type semiconductor? What is the majority charge carriers in a p-type semiconductor? And also, they can also ask what is a type of bond which is present in a silicon crystal structure? That is the covalent bond. And also, they will be asking the number of ele electrons present in the outer orbit of a silicon or a germanium. It is all four. And they can also ask how many valence electrons are present in the outer shell of group 5. Group 5 means itself. 5 itself indicates the number of valence electrons. Again, for group 3, only 3 electrons are present in the outer orbit. So these are the important questions that can come from this session. This video can be used for your preparation for either PSC or UPSC exams because this, these all are general awareness topics. And so this is also very much a relevant topic. Okay, so I really hope the video was useful for you guys. Please do share this video with your friends and family and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thank you.